All right. So we got a very simple experiment that we're going to run today for for myself and nobody else. Let me move this a little bit here. I'm still trying to get used to this little new little setup. Seems to work pretty good. Okay, you see some of our handy dandy, best old timey brand copper chloride. We got. I think we'll have enough to do this experiment. We got some very high end mill spec gold plated items. Can we recover this little bit of gold? And trust me, it's a very minute amount of gold. But can we recover it? with this copper chloride solution that we prepared months ago. Should still be good. I don't know why it wouldn't be. So, we'll weigh out what we got as far as uh, the gold plated items. And it's not much. I mean, not much at all. I mean, I'm very skeptical that this is actually going to work, but I was kind of challenged, okay, indirectly, I shouldn't say directly challenged, but I was challenged all the same, that I could just use nitric acid for this. Why would I use this stuff? You know? Uh, well, as we all know, we got uh, 37 grams of gold-plated, mil-spec gold-plated items. Okay, that's not a lot. That's not a lot at all. Okay, but it's a very simple experiment. We're going to put it on the stir plate. We're going to try to keep it stirring if it's possible. I don't know if we can or not because this, I don't know if this stuff is magnetic or not. It should be copper. I'm hoping it's copper. Okay, so let's see. It. Yeah, it's copper. All right, we got about five milliliters of distilled water in here. Okay. Oh, let's play static games on me here. Okay, we got about. Uh, we're gonna add. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna lay about a hundred milliliters of copper chloride solu in solution. Okay, to this. And voila, we had a, exactly 100 milliliters in this, in this little bottle. Ain't that handy. We should have enough to complete this experiment without having to prepare anymore. Okay, we're using, it doesn't really matter, we're using distilled water when we need it. Shouldn't need it anymore. We're going to add some 3% hydrogen peroxide solution to this. Probably in the next, I don't know next 20 or 30 minutes. Okay, we're going to let it sit here and uh, actually we're going to go ahead and get it get it stirring. So, well, I don't think we'll heat it. I don't think it's necessary to heat it. We're just going to drop that in there. I want to actually keep this stirring. Not very fast, but... I want to keep that stuff stirred up, keep it agitated. It's not going to move this around, this material around too much, okay? I just want to keep it in motion. And that's it. So, can we recover the little minute amount of gold? What did we say that was? 37 grams, 38 grams, it wasn't much. Okay, can we recover the little minute amount of gold using copper chloride in solution? And, of course, no nitric acid whatsoever. And periodically we will add some 3% hydrogen peroxide to it to oxidize it and change its chemical state somewhat. And that's it. So, we'll be back. Alright, I don't know. This stuff might be spent. I'm not uh, shortchanged to a very, very clear color. I'm trying to find some peroxide. We're going to lay a little douse. I'm not even going to measure it. I'm just going to assume I'm putting about 20. And we changed the oxidation state, and there we go. Not real sure what that 
why that uh, changed to such a, a uh, clear color. I'm not a chemist. I just play one on YouTube. But I think we're going to keep the stir bar on. I'm not going to secure it. And I expect that, you know, this will turn right back to a, you know, a clear color. But this has been sitting around for a few months, this stuff. So I'm not sure if there's a shelf life for this. Okay, copper chloride in solution. But we're going to continue with the experiment. See if we get any type of, you know, separation of the gold from the copper base metals. It will work eventually. Okay, but how long would it take for it to work? I don't know. It's not going to be practical no matter what. But we want to see if we can recover this. Like I said, I'm skeptical. But right. be back. All right. I can keep this stand from shaking. I don't know if I can. I've been trying for an hour anyway. I don't know if this copper chloride in solution, we'll remove this. This is getting on my nerves. I don't know what is causing this thing to shake like a reed in the wind, but it is. It's aggravating me. Okay. Because you can see the solution has mostly went back colorless. I'm not smart enough to tell you why. Okay, in this instance. But we're going to add more copper chloride in solution, just what we've had here, with copper, bits of copper that are still undissolved, that are in the solution. The other did not have any bits of copper. We're going to add a small amount, about 50, there we go. Now that is what I wanted to see. It didn't turn a, a light green like, we, uh, like it did when we put 3% hydrogen peroxide in the solution, which simply changed its oxidation state. And that's why you got that green color, according to another YouTuber boober, as I like to say. In this instance, this is the color that I would like to see. Now, chemically and scientifically, why is that the reason? I can't tell you. Okay, I'm not smart enough to tell you why. All I know is when I see this turn, this color, it is an indication that we do have dissolved base metals in solution, okay? Which means we have copper, well, of course we got copper, it's copper chloride in solution, but we're getting an excess of copper. So anyway, we hear it a little bit. I think there's going to be no iron in this, okay, because it was non-magnetic. Now, it's a simple waiting game, okay? We have to wait and see if we, in a few hours or... God forbid, a few days. Okay, come back and we see gold foils floating in the water. Or in the solution, excuse me. And that's about it. All right, day two. And by looking at the solution, uh, we have some very fine, very fine little bits of gold floating around in here. Let's uh, see if I can get a better view here. You can see the shiny little particulates of gold. The gold is separating from the gold-plated material, which I am assuming that the base materials is made of copper. We're going to add a little bit more hydrogen peroxide, 3%, grocery store type. We're going to have to transfer this to a bigger container. Just to oxidize this a little more. And give it a little boost. Some more copper chloride. And we're going to have to transfer this, like I said, to a larger container. All right. Change intact again. You can see I put it on the heat. And you see the sparklies. We are getting some real good gold separation from these gold plated materials. Now uh, it's really started to accelerate in the last really hour. Okay, you can see the gold. It's really starting to separate. So I put it on the heat. 
Okay, because uh, I wasn't going to put it on the heat, but you know me. Hey, um, I won't do this this go around, and five minutes later I do it. Yeah. But right there is, uh, it's starting to look really, really, really promising. So hopefully, by the end of the day, in the next few hours, we'll be able to harvest this gold. And, you know, it's going to be a very, very, very new quantity. But our goal today is to harvest this gold. Okay, put it in Aqua Region. All right, another update. And I am liking what I am seeing. Let's zoom in here and or attempt to zoom in. Let's see if we can. Oh, yeah. You can see that real clearly on the camera. That's all gold separating from the gold plated material. And we're being real careful not to add too much hydrogen peroxide because, you know, uh, technically, technically, I say, we could put this in the aqua region. But there have been some recent experiments from other YouTubers that kind of disprove that. But it just simply doesn't work. Well, I'm not taking a chance. So, anyways, that is excellent. All right, we're going to do a, a quick filtration here. We're going to put this stuff back on cook, but I think we're just going to do an initial filtration. We'll see what we capture as far as the gold foils and the filter paper. We'll wash it out real good. I'll have to put this camera down when I wash everything out. I think that's about all we'll be able to do. As you can see, it's turning the copper. Let's see if I get a good... You can see down in this cup. Yeah. The gold is about... Huh. I'm going to call it 60-70% dissolved off of these gold-plated items. And uh, by looking at the filter paper down here, I've got a good little chunk of, of gold foil in the bottom. Now, we're going to continue this and just strip everything, the rest of it off. But that's 60-70% stripped. I did not expect that. Okay, we just went ahead and filtered it a second time. I noticed that it uh, there was a lot of gold foils floating around in the solution. So we just agitated it with the glass with the glass steering rod. Real good. I just did a second filtration. And I think we're going to go ahead and call the experiment here and just put this what we have in Aqua Region and get this wrapped up. As long as we can get this in Aqua Region, we're going to call it winter winter chicken dinner. So, alright. We're going to let this drain out, wash down the sides of the filter paper, and uh, get this in Aqua Region. Alright guys. We got the uh, little the bottom of the filter paper on the gold what's was recovered we got about 50 milliliters of hydrochloric in there and we're going to put some nitric acid and then put this in aqua region now people that's not familiar with the channel or the process may go wait a minute you said no nitric thought you said you weren't going to use no nitric on this. No nitric to recover the gold. You got to use nitric to refine it. There's no getting around that. You can use bleach, okay, to put this on aqua region, but nitric is so much more efficient. It is just better for the refinement. Okay, so the recovery phase is over. Okay. Recovery phase is over. Now we're in the refinement stage. It's two different stages. Okay, so we're going to put two milliliters of nitric acid and with 50 milliliters, eh, let's go for milliliters of nitric acid. Probably don't need that much. All right, four, mil four milliliters of nitric acid to 50 milliliters of hydrochloric. Probably going to put a smidge of distilled water, well, about 10 milliliters of distilled water, and uh, that's it. We'll do a Stannis check, 
to see if we have gold in solution. Any gold at all? Might be a little too early. But let's check and see. Do we have gold in solution? But that is a uh, positive test. All right. We have gold going into solution. We have successfully recovered gold in less than 24 hours. 38 grams of gold plated items using copper chloride in solution. Okay, to, to strip the gold from a copper base metal material. Okay, we were able to retrieve material, put material into aqua regia, and we have ever so faint, but you can see the purple, you see the blue. That's a positive test for precious metals in solution, namely gold. That's it. Would you like to say winner, winner, chicken dinner? We have successfully completed this experiment. Look for our brand of copper chloride and solution. We will sell it on the Sleeves Bay. Okay, you can hit me up in the comments or uh, hit me up with the email an hour about and uh, I'll tell you how to order it. But uh, basically that's what you're going to get. Okay, alright. That's it. Thanks for watching.